this video is probably going to end up being a series, possibly, uh, about my adventure and my journey into setting up a D-Star hotspot. Now, a D-Star hotspot is basically uh, somewhere you can access D-Star uh, through RF, uh, through just a regular radio, a D-Star enabled radio, uh, that's the 91AD that I've got there. So I'm planning on accessing with that locally, and I've also got a um, ID 800H, which will uh, be going in the car as well. So it will give me D-Star access there. Now the reason I'm looking to set up my own hotspot is that I live approximately 60 kilometres away from the most local repeater. There has been some dabblings, I believe, in D-Star locally in the Newcastle area, but at this point, uh, nothing permanent. Uh, so with having the repeater be sort of you know 60 plus k's away for the most part i can usually get in fairly reliably but if conditions aren't favorable uh, that access becomes a little bit limited and obviously you've got to consider that there's other traffic going through the repeater as well there, there are more and more people coming on but in saying that uh, when i access the repeater which tends to be late at night for that purpose is to get the repeater on my own and to be able to have a bit of an experiment with it it tends to be inactive for hours at a time uh, one of the benefits of D-Star is you can jump on and see when the repeater was last used and we'll probably touch on that a bit later in the series. Uh, so basically what I want to do is set up my own uh, hotspot which will enable me to experiment uh, at will and and if all goes successfully uh, then I may even consider you know going to uh, full duplex repeater status but that's that's a long way off considering we haven't even set up the hotspot yet. Now, uh, options I considered when looking to set up the hotspot, um, I did do or look at the DVAP access dongle, or just a DVAP dongle, uh, as listed there. And as you can see that, it's a tiny little box and there's plenty of videos on, on YouTube for your uh, consideration to go and have a look at it. Um, but as you can see there, the DVAP's fairly small, which is obviously one of the benefits. Uh, the DVAP dongle, is actually currently sitting at a rating of five, five out of five, uh, from three pages worth of reviews there, which is obviously testimony to its success, uh, and and I guess its ease of implementation. Uh, five out of five is pretty good after three pages and twenty one reviews. Uh, you know anything you see usually over a four usually means that the um, that the hardware, the radio, the rig, the antenna or software, whatever it is, is, is usually pretty reliable. Uh, you do get some anomalies in there, uh, and you would expect to see at least one person uh, giving it a bit of a tough rating, because some amateurs seem to be pretty tough uh, on their reviews. Anyway, getting back to the point, this was an option, and as you can see, a pretty reliable option and successful uh, for, for many, many amateurs out there. The reason I didn't want to go with the DVAP dongle was it's limited in its coverage. Uh, as you can see there it gives 10 milliwatts out uh, on the 2 meter band. I believe you can get a 70 SEMS version of that as well uh, and you can access that via RF um, and get your coverage that way. But with your 10 milliwatts, uh, hopefully you can see there, um, typically the coverage that they get for that is uh, typically around the house. Uh, and maybe a little bit greater uh, if you connect it up to an external antenna. Uh, there are stories of external antennas sort of covering up to sort of maybe a couple of miles or something like that. Um, they do say with an external antenna uh, up at reasonable height that you can expect to get coverage of a thousand meters or a kilometer, so a little bit less than a mile. Wanting to extend that and not wanting to be, you know, whilst I want to experiment with it but not be limited to my local uses as in just around the house. Uh, I work approximately six kilometres away from here and would like to have the ability to access from at least at work. That said, um, I needed to look at something a little bit more powerful than the DVAP dongle. There is also the option of the DV dongle, uh, which varies slightly from the DVAP dongle or the DV access point dongle in that this simply plugs in your computer and then you use the audio inputs outputs of your computer to access the D-Star network. Um, now that's a little bit closer just being Skype 
for my mind. I, I wanted to still have some RF input, um, make it feel like it was, yeah, still associated to the amateur radio that I that I got involved in. So, whilst this this is a, a very valid uh, option, it wasn't an option that I wanted to look at going. That's why I, I then started to consider the DVAP uh, dongle. So after considering the DV dongle and the DV access point dongle, that led me to do a little bit of research uh, and led me to a number of different node adapters, one of which is what I've chosen here, which is the uh, Moen Com Starboard. So what our node adapter effectively does uh, in lieu of the, the DVAP dongle is it allows us to use uh, the power of an analog radio to transmit a signal out R over RF and then access that, use, access that using our HT or any other uh, D-Star enabled radio uh, to access the D-Star network. So as you can imagine, hooking this up to a, a 50 watt analog radio, which I've got a, a couple of spare ones sitting around, is gonna give me a lot greater coverage than obviously the 10 milliwatts regardless of how high I get the antenna. So what this setup is effectively going to let me do is uh, talk in through my 91AD, my D-Star ID 91AD uh, HT, talk into the analog radio, which in this case is either going to be the Kenwood TM71V, I think it is, uh, sorry, V71, or I'm also considering possibly using the uh, Yaesu FT8900, which is currently in the car. Now what you need out of these radios, or one of the requirements of the radios, is to have um, a board rate or a data input and a board rate of 9600. Um, but for the case of setting up with the, the node adapter, you'll note that um, you need a 9600 board rate. So both of those radios uh, fall into that bracket. We need the node adapter, which has just turned up today. A uh, little bit concerned about that dent in the box, but hopefully it shouldn't do too much damage. You need a PC. Uh, and that's the laptop um, just here, an old compact. Now there's not much of a requirement apparently as far as um, specs for the PC, so the old um, compact uh, V2000 something or other is going to serve those purposes. I was also looking for something that I can leave on which is going to be low power um, and, and you know use as little power as possible, so that's why I've come up with a laptop. Uh, obviously an internet connection, so I've got a good uh, ADSL connection here and then out to the D-Star network there. So hopefully over the course of the series we're going to go from having all the pieces of effectively a D-Star hotspot uh, in the node adapter, the analog radio uh, and the PC. We're going to go through the settings of sort of the software and the hardware, putting it all together and at the end of the series we'll hopefully have a, a successful uh, and up and running D-Star hotspot. Uh, for my use and obviously anybody else's uh, within the local area. Now obviously uh, if you've tread this path before me and you've got any pointers or anything along the way that you think might help, feel free to post up any comments, that will be most appreciated. Uh, if you've got any questions, throw them up and obviously this is going to be a learning experience for me as well. Uh, so if you've got any questions, feel free to post them up. I'm doing my best to assist. Uh, or you might obviously throw up something, a uh, question or something that I haven't thought of that might benefit me along the way. So I guess sit back guys uh, and enjoy and uh, we'll see where this leads us. So thanks for coming on this journey and uh, we'll talk to you soon.